Hello everybody, this is Technoax, and happy Friday to you. Um, it's going to be a wet one over here in Washington, but it's still going to be a great weekend by far. And uh, I wanted to start off this weekend by kind of showing you a synthesizer group that I'm kind of proud of. It's from the last song that I did called Taking Your Time. It's a down-tempo kind of track, a chilled kind of track. It's very atmospheric and I'm particular pr uh, particularly proud of the cluster of instruments right here which I use to kind of set the tone at the start of the track. So I'm going to play the sound for you right now so you can hear it. So that is the riff right there. And as you can see, that particular sound is formed by these three instruments right here. So I used an instrument called Spire to complete this track. And Spire is kind of like Serum and Europa and Massive in that it's a wavetable synthesizer. Although unlike those synthesizers this one is more atmospheric it's meant to be in the back of your track instead of like serum or europa which those synthesizers are in your face it's very in front of the mix at least to start with and with this particular one um if you see me do a lot of synth wave especially lately this this synthesizer has been ex ex exponentially helpful in helping me basically set the tone for those kind of kinds of tracks. So you, if you want to do synth wave, I definitely recommend this synthesizer. It's not required, but it helps a lot, and is 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 basically the perfect synthesizer for the job. It costs about one hundred ninety nine dollars, but if you can afford this kind of thing, I de and you know I I would not ask for that money back because it's it's perfect it does what i need it to do and um you know the sounds that it it makes is perfect for the kind of genres that you know synth wave um is for in any case um let me show you the automation first uh as you can see all three of these tracks have like these automation patterns built into the automation tracks of these three tracks here in Reaper. And those automation tracks control this wheel right here. Um, you can control basically literally everything about this synthesizer in these automation tracks by kind of like setting the automation here. But as you can see, that's a lot of stuff to go through. And so I really only needed to do one um, uh, parameter, but it was just easy to mark the mod wheel as the thing that I wanted to automate it. And uh, the reason why this is good is then you can actually use the mod wheel right here into your matrix to basically perform the automation. And as you can see, I only did one parameter here on this partic particular synth, but um uh, you can also select up to four different um automation uh triggers to basically control using just this one mod and if you really want to get um insane if you want to control a bunch of different things using the same thing you can basically just select uh mod one right here on your second track your second slot here and um uh, you can basically um, automate as much as you want. So that's like four here, four here. And then the crazy thing is you've got like five different pages that you can basically set up um, automation with if you really want it to be that advanced. I haven't figured out why I would need to be that advanced, but some people are smarter than I am in this respect. So but in any case, this one is right here is the first instrument instrument i'm going to basically solo it out for you so you can hear what's going on <laughs> Okay, 
So as you can hear, that's the top end of the track. This is basically what I started out with. Um, and the reason uh, why I usually start out with the top of a synthesizer kind of combination here, and I work my way lower to kind of like fill out the lower end when I need to. And as you can see, the waveform here is kind of a combination between um, uh, a classic saw wave, which is basically, you can see, it kind of goes up like a saw wave. But also, as you can see, it's tempered a little bit by this violin waveform right here. And it's at the, I would say about the 9, 30, 10 o'clock position here. But if I move this around, you can see that it goes to a, a, a violin waveform here. And then it goes almost to a straight, I guess that's kind of a saw waveform. It's not totally, it's not a perfect one, but it's mostly a saw waveform. So we'll go back and we'll kind of like, okay. So as you can hear, it's it sounds like saw wave, but it's got a little bit of warmth to it. And then after that, uh, let's see, I, I didn't really affect the, the octaves or the notes or anything like that. But what I did after that was I put the unison mode to four voices at one octave and detuned it to the 10 o'clock position and the density at 12 o'clock position right there and put the wide um, framing to about 2 o'clock, I would say, 2 o'clock right there and then panned a little bit to the left. Now this is just this one oscillator right here. I've got another one right here, which is a straight uh, saw wave at one octave lower um, and detuned at the 12 o'clock position, three voices, density at the 12 and the wide. It was, it's not quite as wide as o oscillator one. I've got uh, oscillator three here, which is a straight saw wave detuned at the 12 o'clock posi uh, um, position one voice and no width right here. So it's kind of straight down the middle. Um, and that's kind of, it's kind of like a focus point when everything else has got kind of like a stereo width to it. And it looks like that's all I've got right there for the synthesizers. Now I run everything through a Perfecto LP4 low pass filter. So Basically what that is, is um, a low pass filter obviously filters out the high frequencies and allows the lower frequencies to continue. And in that way you can kind of uh, shape and mold the sound, but it's also great for, uh, it's also great for when you want to automate things out, it'll give things more character when it's changing. And this is what you affect basically through the mod, uh, mod, mod uh, wheel right here in the matrix. I've got my resonance set at about, I guess, 11 o'clock right there. Okay. And everything else, we don't really use the second filter, so we'll be, we'll, we'll be all right with that. All right. And then shaping, we've got uh, a little bit of reverb right here on the plate and the, uh, the, the plate is really wide um, and we've got a little bit of a ping pong delay here and that's what you've been that that echoing sound that you hear when you basically play a note and it kind of like echoes out that's what this is right here I did a straight ping pong right here mix it about probably that's a, what eight o'clock right there in any case uh, that is how that works out and um, where the mod wheel comes in basically um, the automation kind of like opens and closes the filter at specific sounds so you can hear the, the little wow sound the little like humanizing sound here <laughs> Now, after I made that tra uh, track, I decided that I needed a little bit more low end. And um, the way to do that, uh, I tried to um, basically lift over all the chords from here and put it down here, but I found that the mix was uh, too muddy. I didn't like the muddiness. So instead I opted for just the low notes instead. 
So I did this. So essentially what I did was I essentially copied most of what I did over uh, from the first synthesizer to this one. The only difference is I added in oscillator 4 here and basically what that was is I added a classic sign to kind of add to the low end there. And uh, the sine wave is essentially what you use if you want to do a kind of a low bass, a sub bass sound. Uh, a straight sine wave will do that every single time and you will not be sorry if you use that in your mix even with rock tracks uh, I mentioned this before in a video but uh, when I do um, rock and heavy metal a lot of times I find myself well pretty much every time I find myself backing up the bass guitar with a sine wave and that helps a lot with the low end even on rock tracks in any case, when you get that and you mix those two things together, you get this. So you can hear it. You can hear it. With, uh, with the first synthesizer, there's a little bit of thinness to it, but that low... Uh, pad basically lends a little bit of weight to the entire like mix here but there's still something missing here and I I felt it until I came up with this third one right here that um, when the uh, lower notes uh, basically when when the filter goes to um, zero and it filters out all the frequencies especially right here where I decided to cut off really really um fast and quickly and leave this part right here kind of like open um it left a space where i felt i needed it to be filled and i was really tempted to um do basically something that was a different note um something that was basically kind of like a little like flutter or a, a little like, kind of like fill or something like that to fill that up but eventually what i decided to do was kind of utilize something else to back it up and this is where this synthesizer comes in right here okay so you can hear that it by itself it's kind of jarring and that is because it's not meant to be in the front of the mix it's meant to back up these two synthesizers up here um and that's why when you hear those little like really jarring kind of like transitions between uh the low notes to back up to the high note it sounds jarring right there but combined with this, you don't really notice that jarring transition because these two synthesizers right here basically make up for that. And you don't hear that kind of like sudden jarring like transition between zero and this, this value right here. So we've got this instance of Spire, which uh, utilizes the same automation as the previous two. Uh, only this one... Um, there is really only one uh, oscillator that I'm using and I have four voices it's basically um, kind of uh, um, it's essentially a, a, a saw wave right here and I've got uh, the detune here on the unison mode to about 12 o'clock here the density to about 12 o'clock as well at octave one really wide up to about I would say 2 to 30 right there and um, no real filter input here we don't want to uh, we haven't I haven't really filtered this out um, but and, and this is essentially on the sine wave here uh, so when you um, when you activate this mix 
Um, this is at what? That's probably the, uh, I would say the seven o'clock position right there. Seven, eight, eight o'clock position right there. As you um, turn the knob to the right, as you can see, there's uh, it's basically a, a sine wave that you get. Um, and that's the product of the mix between these two waveforms right here. So essentially this is basically this waveform right here is your classic, um, you know, saws and, and your your noise, your frequency mod modulations and, and stuff like and pulse width modulations as well. Whereas this is basically your um, your um, uh, wavetable forms as well. You can still you can still choose um, your basic waveforms, but these are based very very specific, and you can morph between the two basically. Okay, so basically what I did with this, and as you can see, I did have a reverb here, and the reverb is mixed all the way to the three o'clock position, which is almost like a hundred percent. But and you would think that that would kind of like muddy up the mix, but I utilized both the wet mix and the dry wet of the um, of the wavetable here and the reverb to basically uh, get what I want in the matrix here. And as you can see, like the other synthesizers, we've got a source here on mod one, and it's mixed to the trigger of the reverb dry wet right here but it's uh, mixed to uh, it's basically a negative mix so when the the and the automation hits the effect is the reverse of what everything else gets affected to and what that does is like on on the lower parts um, the parts where it's not really kind of like doing anything or it's kind of like acting kind of as, uh, as more of a, a a background backup and stuff like that the the reverb is mixed all the way to this position right here but when it's meant to stand out when the saw wave comes in um, this reverb actually goes all the way down to probably about uh, I'd say like the 10 o'clock position which is probably maybe 20 percent mix there and then on this slot right here we've got an oscillator the oscillator wet mix right here and basically, when um, when the uh, uh, the when I'm calling for it, basically this goes to the saw wave over here. And when I don't need it, or actually it goes to the sine wave right here, which is the more um, it's the more docile, like more uh, tame tone. And then when it's all the way to the left here, or the the left here, when uh, the automation is all the way at zero. Um, this is the position where it's at, where it's at more or less the saw wave. So it's, it's essentially when you're not hearing the stuff in these first two synthesizers, the saw wave comes up and kind of just backs it up and fills the sound, not too much, but it fills up the, the sound with a little bit of kind of like a backup uh, reverb there. So you get this. Okay. All right, so once again, when the mod wheel, when the mod knob right here is all the way to the left, your wet mix is all the way to the left and you get the saw wave, which is the more buzzy kind of saw sound and everything. And uh, the dry wet mix is all the way to the left, which is very, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's a uh, kind of like a, a, a very dry sound. And then when the mod wheels all the way to the right here, uh, that wetness or the, the, uh, the reverb goes all the way to the right and um, it basically uh, it, it's um, uh, it uh, the reverb basically is 
is, is more prevalent in the mix and then you've got a sine wave over here due to this uh, this knob being mixed all the way to the right here so and so that's the sound and here is what we've got we can basically just play it So that is my little show and tell here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back with more music, of course. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have a nice day.